second half of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge season begins with a day in the park, beautiful Lime Rock Park in Connecticut. For 58 years, sports car aficionados have traveled to New England to take on the challenge of Lime Rock. Just a mile and a half long, but fast and sweeping, with disaster awaiting the unwary on every lap. The championship in the ground-pounding Grand Sport class is close, and in the high-revving street tuner division, it's even closer. Stand by for the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge from Lime Rock on Fox Sports 1. How often do you get to witness a race on a track listed on the National Register of Historic Places? Welcome to Lime Rock Park in the Litchfield Hills of Northwestern Connecticut for round six of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge in 2015. Welcome to the Northeast Grand Prix from Lime Rock. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Varsha alongside Calvin Fish and Justin Bell. Know this about Lime Rock. It is one of the best spectator tracks in the country and there is nary a single grandstand seat on the property. An early morning fog has lifted here in the Valley of the Litchfield Hills, Calvin, and if a team wants to lift the championship trophy at the end of the year, they're gonna have to lift their game starting today. Well, Bob, it has to be moving day for the teams who are chasing down that number six Camaro from Stevenson Motorsport. Their closest challenges are the Rumbum team. They're the defending champs here at Lime Rock. In fact, they've won three of the last four here at this bull ring, but they have to repeat that magic today to close down the gap. I think they're also going to need help from other teams to create a points cushion also if they're going to hunt down that number six, who have really had an awesome start to this championship year. It could be a pivotal day, Justin, for this championship. Oh, yes, but if you're the championship leader, this could be your worst nightmare scenario because typically we don't see the GS and ST cars run together at Lime Rock Park. So this year we have 40 cars on this diminutive track. So how are they going to deal with it? Well, as close as these cars run in terms of performance and speed, backing off really isn't an option. Being cautious will likely provoke trouble. So controlled aggression, that's my advice, that's the key. And surviving, of course, the intense roller coaster that is Lime Rock Park. Well, this is race six of ten on the season. It's that time of year when arrival on the racetrack could actually be a help for your championship hopes. With more on that story, here's Brian Till. Bob, as you guys were talking, indeed, for the 13 Rumbum team, they need to win almost every race from here on out is a must win, and they are surrounded by Camaros on the grid today. You talk about a little help from your friends. Maybe that help could come from Multimatic. They have fielded two very, very fast Shelby GT350 RCs the last two rounds. In fact, the last two races, they have started on the pole, but at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, it all went wrong for the number 15. Scott Maxwell behind the wheel through the very fast turn four, gets together with another car that 15 written off they had to rebuild or actually yeah. build a brand new race car but for the 158 a very different story they take the victory at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park they are very fast indeed for the 15 here at Lime Rock they'll start at the back of the pack because of an electrical problem in qualifying but the 158 rolls off and forth that's a story in Grand Sport for Street Tuner here's Jamie Howe well, Brian, it was here last year where Freedom Autosport driver Liam Dwyer earned his first series victory in a dramatic and in an emotional fashion. This year, he's teamed up with Andrew Carbonell, and the duo have been able to carry that momentum forward. They won a race at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. They finished on the podium in the last event at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, and they have a healthy lead in the ST points battle. It's nine points that they lead over CJ Wilson racing drivers Chad McCombie and Stephen McAleer. But today, the advantage goes to Chad McCombie here at his first pole of the season. So he starts up front today, guys. This is going to be a really exciting race. This track, built back in 1956, held the first professional road race in America in 57. Tell us about it, Justin. Well, how much action can you fit into one and a half miles in seven turns? An awful lot, as we're just about to find out. The corners are named as they lie. You've got Big Bend, which is really the first sequence of two right-handers. Very tricky, carry the speed through there. You got the left hander, you got the right hander. No name straight, really isn't a straight at all. You're still turning. Then you've got the uphill. Remember those iconic photographs of cars, four wheels off the ground? Well, that's where it was. Through West Bend, downhill, very fast. It takes a lot of guts to get through there and to the start finish line. Which sits on the Sam Posey straightaway, named for our great friend and colleague. Here's a look at our onboard cameras, three aboard Grand Sport cars and one in the ST Mazda MX-5, being started by injured Marine Staff Sergeant Liam Dwyer. What a great story he is. 
Our Porsche safety car ready to pull off. Matt Bell in that big Camaro on the left. Hugh Plum on that bright blue Porsche on the outside. Green, green, we'll green, lead green him flag. down to Big Bend. We are racing at Lime Rock. Matt Bell starting for the pole for his 12th time. What a sensational qualifying effort yesterday. Davis looks to the inside. He's up and over the curb there, nearly into the rum bum machine. I spoke with Matt at the beginning. Oh, look, look at this. The ST's going for the line. Nice, clean jump there for McCombie. Yeah, big jump for Chad McCombie as he heads down to turn one. Couple of cars looking down the inside. One of those is Bill Orbel in that Trimtex BMW looking for a way around the outside. Two factory BMW drivers in the ST field today. Someone's wide there. Yeah, well, I was talking with Matt Bell before the start. And what I was going to say was they, the track, we had a lot of rain last night. If you go off, it's very wet, very muddy. This is a great start for these guys. There's a lot of action jammed into these little corners, Calvin. Yeah, Orbelin's making hay as well. He's had a great start here. Look at him already gained a couple of spots here on this opening lap. This is the no-name straight. It has no name and it's not straight. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Ashley Freiberg up and into the tires. Wow. I so, spoke to Michael Harvey this morning on the way down to the race, and he said we're in good shape today, but I think that's up in West Bend, possibly. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that wasn't good shape there. I mean, tell you what, that must have been a, a, a visual, a, a, mo a memory for whoever was the flag worker standing there as that car wow. mounted the guardrail. Boy, that's the car. Well, first, the Aston Martin threw me off the road, and then I got hit from behind. Her teammate, Trent Hinman, won the championship in this car last year. It's been a tough year for these, for this team. It's a great driver pairing. Here we see the similar livery Trimtex car in the ST class driven by Bill Orbelin. Well, our first full course caution on lap one, so it'll be what we call a short caution. The pits will remain closed. This is a bull ring of a racetrack, Bob, and actually that's coming out of the uh, Right hander there on the no name straightaway, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, we'll see what we can reconstruct of that. A big accident for Ashley Freiberg. We'll take a break and return to Lime Rock Park in Connecticut after this. Back at Connecticut's Lime Rock Park, round six of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, a full course caution on lap one. After a heavy accident, you can see the damage to the number 46 car of Ashley Freiberg. Let's take a look at what video we have of what happened. There you see the donut on the side of the number eight Camaro from Mentel Autosport. You heard Ashley say she thought she was run off by an Aston. Turns out it was the Camaro. On board here with Scott Maxwell. Look up ahead there, you can see a little bit of argy bargy as we call as they come through the right hander and Anthony Mantella just gets into the side of Ashley there. And I think what happened, Justin, is I think she, he actually got into her right front wheel and just yeah. turned her literally. It wasn't a bump of the car, more of a bump of the steering, and suddenly she spears off the road. Exactly. It was it, when you hit almost the metal on the wheel rim on the side of the car, it's so instantaneous, it bounces you off. And I think that's why she sounded so surprised on the radio. Jamie? Well, hearing her on the radio, obviously that was a good sign after something so spectacular, but for Trent him, an obvious disappointment on your face. What perspective can you bring to this incident? You know, I'm really not too sure. It's hard to see from the replay from the Mustang what, what exactly happened because it was a couple cars ahead, but um, it just seemed like as soon as she ended up off the road outside of the curbing on the wet grass, there's no slowing down a car at that point, and, um, you know, just unfortunately all that momentum went to the wall. But... I'm just so bummed right now for all these fall line guys, all of our uh, guys at Trimtex, IG Rewards Club, and Top One Oil. You know, we, we really felt like we had a great car this weekend. And, you know, I know we say that a lot, but we genuinely have been strong here a lot of, a lot of years in the past, and especially this year, it really felt good. But, you know, it is what it is. It's racing. We're going to move on. We're going to improve. We're going to learn from this and, you know, hopefully bring it home at Road America. Yeah, rough start and end to the race today. Rough start today in a rough season coming off a double championship for the fall line team and Trent Hidman. We're ready to go green here at Lime Rock. We'll take a quick break. You won't miss a thing. See you in a moment. The famous covered bridge in West Cornwall, Connecticut. Synonymous with this corner of the Litchfield Hills. 
Lime Rock Park is situated in a beautiful part of New England and barely two hours from Manhattan, downtown New York, believe that or not. We are ready to go green, lights out on the Porsche safety car, under the Bailey Bridge, down through the diving turn, and Matt Bell leads Hugh Plum and the rest of the field to start finish. Green, 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 green. See there, Hugh Plum immediately moves to the right side of the straightaway to defend from Andrew Davis. Those Camaros have a lot of torque to use there in this type of scenario. Sindrick coming off a win at CTMP, looks to the outside for third spot. Not just a win, youngest winner in series history at age 16. With track position being so important here, it's so difficult to overtake. These opening laps, when everything isn't really up to temperature, are absolutely critical. If someone just gets a little sideways in front, Cal, that's your time to go by. But we've seen this lineup before, haven't we? Bell, Plum, Davis, Sindrick. We've, we've seen those top three definitely run like this. Somehow, Hugh Plum manages to insert himself between the Stevenson machines every single race, which I'm sure was not in their original strategy. Yeah, Hugh's just done a brilliant job this year. Now team with his brother Matt, of course, for the season in the Rumbum team, and they have really start to put the pressure on and I think they're really the team that can maybe take it to the number six car that's had such an awesome start of the year with three victories but you can't count out those new Shelby Mustangs I mean they've been awfully strong Maxwell's car had a problem in qualifying he didn't get to run so I saw him this morning he said the car's pretty good it's been essentially a new car so we said we've still got a few little teething problems hence the electrical glitch but look at that oh, oh so that I mean, was wide that was very wide, wide there they talked about after qualifying, tide degradation. And Matt Bell seems to be slipping and sliding early. Just a lot of heat here this weekend at Lime Rock Park, and these guys are really pushing the extremes of these tires. I mean, when you look at it, you'd say that physicality of the Porsche looks like it would be a little more suited to Lime Rock Park than, the, you know, the Camaro, but I don't know. Uh, not the way the Camaro goes at the front, for sure. I Brian? spoke with Matt Bell just before the race, and one of the things he said is, we've got a very good Camaro here in the number nine for one lap. After that, the tires immediately start going away. The shortest racetrack on, this, on the season, this one and a half miles, only one left-hand corner, the left side tires get punished, and right now, it already looks like the Conti's really starting to go away on that number nine. Now we understand the number eight of Anthony Mantella is going to get a drive-through penalty, not for the incident with the BMW of Ashley Freiburg, but for jumping the initial start of the race. Yeah, he had a good move there on the opening lap, so uh, obviously that got him into that position. And that will cost him about 22 seconds just driving down pit lane at the pit lane speed limit. Costs you 22 seconds to guys who stay on the racetrack. So that's a big penalty to serve here. But right now, Hugh Plum starting to put the pressure on. That Porsche has huge momentum. I think he'd love to clear Matt Bell before they get into traffic today because the talk of that Camaro is going to be really good in traffic today. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer that the, the dynamics of driving that Porsche, I reckon you're going to see Hugh go by. It, the, the, I mean, he could even do it now coming down into to the first corner here. Look, he's seeing to the inside. This is exactly it. He knows he can carry it under the brakes and take your words back, Justin. <laughs> God, that, that prediction was wrong, but it's going to happen any sooner rather than later because it looks like Matt Bell is almost having to hold on to the car, which is not a style we've seen him have to employ very often. Now, one other point. Normally, these cars race for two and a half hours. Today's race, just two hours long, that could have an impact on tire and fuel strategy. Absolutely. What it means is you can do it now on one stop. Talking to the GS teams, they said, oh, right about an hour, so we're pretty good. We've got the pace laps. Now that early yellow, they can do it on one stop. But what it means is you're doing longer stints on those tires, Bob, so that's a really good point. Yeah, Chad McCombie there leading in ST. Uh, should be worth pointing out, Bill Oberlin is already up to fourth in class. That is a, I mean, no. Is there anyone more experienced <laughs> ever than, than uh, Bill Oberlin on how to run one of these, run any BMW in any series anywhere in the world? So uh, I think you'll see his, his experience at the opening lap certainly showing. Well, he's had so much success here at Lime Rock Park in various series and categories over the years. And John Edwards, his teammate, the other BMW factory driver, he won his first uh, Rolex GT race here, his first ALMS uh, GT victory was here as well. So it's been a happy hunting ground for both of those drivers. And it says something about the competitiveness of the series here in the GS category, especially you get two BMW factory shoes like Arbolin and Edwards in the car. They just qualified eighth, and here they are having to fight their way to the front with the regulars. Jason Breed has actually just took that fourth spot away from Bill Arbolin there down into the break zone for Big Bend.
And then talking with Burton Racing this weekend about having those two factory guys in the car, they said it's, it's fantastic in terms of being able to download from that car for the sister number 23 machine. They said we have extra data that we can work with where it's a little bit of an issue is that this race weekend is just over 24 hours long, so it's a very compressed time frame. So the team has been scrambling a little bit just to get both cars race ready this weekend. However, you see what Bill's doing out there. He's magic right now. He said they were going to struggle a little bit. They took a step backwards in qualifying, but he said they had all the right smart people in front, and he said this track makes you desperate when you get into race situations. Yeah, I spoke to their engineer, Jim Bell, this morning. He said, yeah, we're just struggling for lack of track time here, really. This car was uh, rebuilt recently and uh, really turned its first lap here in practice yesterday morning. So he said, we just ideally need more times. We see Bill Orblin just getting swamped here right now. Thought I saw a whisper smoke as he went through Big Bend uh, on that previous lap, having lost that initial spot. And now he's just uh, kind of being snowballed. Yeah, here. it looks a bit on the defensive, doesn't he, all the way through here. But, uh, you know, you know, he's driving as fast as it go, but the order up at the front has not changed. It looks, Hugh Plum looking still very sporty, keeping the pressure on Matt Bell in the Stevenson machine. But I tell you what, this kind of pressure, Calvin, is going to be in the favor of the Porsche much more than the Camaro. Well, we talked about it, Justin, in terms of this has to be moving day for the Rum Bum team and anyone else who wants to challenge the number six we're on board with right there for the championship. But you also can't afford th th to throw it all away. I mean, Matt Bell has gone in really deep on the brakes in a big bend. He's still got good dynamic grip there as he goes on at the middle pedal. But uh, certainly, you look like Plum's a little bit quicker at this stage of the game. You think he's just waiting? Well, I think he'd love to be by him before they encounter all this ST traffic because the Camaro should have an advantage there. He's Matt Bell getting very wide there into the uphill. I think Jamie was very right, though, in, in her information about how punishing it is for the left-hand tires, uh, especially on, you know, just think of the engine weight up front in that Camaro, the placement of, of the center of gravity in that is a, a lot of dynamics going through those front tires. So um, patience will favor Hugh, I believe. When you make your stop, do you take a complete set of four Continental tires, or do you just take two? Basically right-hand turns, so the left side tires are taking all that energy. We'll find out as the race goes on. Back at Lime Rock Park, less than 90 minutes remaining in round six of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, and we have a new leader right there. You called it, Calvin. The Rumbun team needs a win. They're fourth in five years here, and they are getting after it. Yeah, certainly a great job, and as always, traffic can be a fact here, but as we saw, Justin, this Rum Bum car just seems to be hooked up a little bit longer than the number nine car that he got around. Now let's give you a look at what's happened in the last few minutes. On board with Liam Dwyer. He gets tapped from behind, around he goes. Our championship leader in ST was trying to Go side by side there with the Mini, and I have to believe he got a little nudge in the rear end, but he continued, and he's staying in the action right now, which is good news. More action for the Mantella Autosport car getting off here. Yeah, not particularly significant in its own. I mean, look at the number 11 there. That is not from that accident. That was obviously from something else. But this is how we got the lead change. You can see Hugh Plum goes down the inside of Matt Bell. It was really a case of the, the, the Stevenson uh, car went in very deep, didn't he, Calvin? And actually was able to uh, give Hugh the advantage going down the inside. You can see it right here. We're on board with Andrew Davis in the championship leading number six. I mean, Plum looked at the inside. Matt Bell just took it in ridiculously deep, ran out of road, essentially got up in the gray, and Hugh Plum took advantage. Great move. To Brian Till. Matt Plum sitting here on the wall watching his brother take the lead. The guys have been talking about how important winning is for you guys to get back in this championship hunt. Step one is done, now he's in the lead. What's he got to do to keep the car underneath him for a stint? Yeah, I mean, winning's always been really important to us. It's important to our boss, by the way. Hi, Jen and Lou at home. Sorry you couldn't be here. Hugh does a great job. You can always count on him giving, uh, you know, 100% going above and beyond. So he's always the right guy for it. Track position's going to be important, as they all say, at the very end. So uh, we're in a good spot, and um, hopefully we can win this thing. Speaking of winning, I just want to mention, I don't know if you remember from last year, we had a lot of Go Jackie posters. Uh, we were wishing our friend Jackie uh, well as she recovered from cancer treatments. 
her only complaint during the whole treatments uh, process was that she had internet so she could come watch her favorite team race. She's traveled a thousand miles with her friend uh, Kathy Ross to be here. And we're so happy to have her here, so happy to, that she's looking so well. And uh, that's the definition of a real winner right there. Yeah, that definitely puts winning in perspective, Jamie. Well, we covered Bill Arberlin all the way up to fourth in that ST BMW. However, now back down to 17th, John. We know now he has a broken front sway bar. What will Bill be experiencing behind the wheel? Well, the front feels really lazy, and then it grabs on, you know, in a really unpredictable way, so it causes big snap oversteer. I mean, you see, I like Bill Arberlin's two and a half seconds off. Uh, that means the car's not very fun to drive, so it's really disappointing. You know, it feels like it's over before it began. I mean, we were... We were called in last minute to do this deal. It's really fun to uh, to show up with Bill. We, we're not used to co-driving together, so uh, it's been kind of a fun weekend. We've been trying to develop the car. It's really fun to watch him go from eighth to third in a matter of, what, a minute and 10 seconds of green flag running. But uh, once the bar breaks, there's very little you can do. So we'll try to fix it in the pits, but probably lose a few laps at a place like Lime Rock when you try to fix something like that. All right, thank you, John. That may have been that little whisper smoke we we're seeing when you lose the sway bar essentially the body roll is going to be extreme maybe getting a little bit of tire rub but you could see that billy was dropping like a stone he doesn't give up positions easily and uh, he just realized that he was a lame duck at that point it was interesting i just had a little thought uh, bob when when we saw the leaders uh, catch up the back of the st field that was after about 20 laps um 20 laps anywhere else. Well, Le Mans, that's two hours. At uh, <laughs> Le, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, that's about 15 minutes here. It was like seven minutes. But we have had a lead change again as Matt Bell has gone back by Hugh Plum. That was rather confusing to me as we watched that a second ago while we were talking uh, about Oberlin. It's, it's interesting to me. I thought Hugh was going to be able to stretch his legs once he went past. But I think in the traffic, what you said about the, the torque and the grunt of the Camaro meant that he was able to take advantage again and or did Hugh simply push his tires too hard while he was sitting behind waiting to go past yeah it's a good potential for either one of those but uh, you know we know the dynamic of this race you know that Camaro has a big bigger motor it's going to have that torque and be able to take advantage so if you if you have to lift off the gas pedal in that Porsche you don't have the momentum there and you don't have the grunt to really get you back up to speed as quickly so importantly for the Stevenson group they recognize Rum Bum are the team we really have to focus on with the six car, but right now the nine car is doing them a favor by taking away the big points potentially today. Andrew Davis drives the six with whom you ride. Meanwhile, his teammate is with Brian. Lawson Aschenbach down here in the pit watching Matt Bell. And one of the things we talked about is how this racetrack punishes tires. Is it more important for you guys to win a race or more important for you guys to be in front of the 13 for your teammates next door? Well, realistically, we just need to win races right now. We've got a little bit of a deficiency in points right now and, and we've been so fast so many races that it's been a little frustrating but you know Matt does such a great job at the beginning you know you kind of have that trade-off do you abuse the car and stay in the lead or do you try to save tires to serve fuel a little bit but realistically right now we got to go for it and uh, I'm really excited about how he's doing our Stevenson Motorsports Chevrolet Camaro Z28R has been fast all weekend and I feel like I've got the best starter in the business so I'm um, happy happy for what he's doing. I think what he just said was he doesn't care about the six. They want to go win this race, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the translation, Brian. Uh, yeah, winning is all these guys want to do, and, and everyone is pushing so hard. But we see an interesting dance in the dynamics of these cars. I mean, right now the six has got right up behind Hugh when it comes to the traffic, uh, which has obviously squeezed things up. Austin Sindrick doesn't even seem able to carry quite the pace of these leading three cars right now. But again, he could have got separated a bit by traffic. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sporty out there. I think what you're seeing really is another example of how savvy Rob Nadell and Andrew Davis are. I mean, they recognize the big picture. They're a great driver appearing, so much experience, great speed. They're executing every step of the way. And uh, Andrew's just been sitting back there taking care of his tires. You see Matt Bell up ahead. He's a little bit loose there coming through the downhill, which is not ideal. But Matt Bell has excellent car control as he's displayed over the years. But this is a fascinating battle that's heating up for the lead. And what's Andrew Davis got up his sleeve? Right there now on the rear bumper Ooh, of the little three. Touch, little oh. kiss. Hello. Yeah, you know, little when a car's fully loaded like that, the dynamics of the car are all the way on the edge, and, and uh, you only just takes a little whisper. Uh, Boris said was the expert at that. Twice in my career, I've been turned around by him, and he went, "What? I didn't touch you. <laughs> oh, just not much." See a little crease there in the, the rear bumper fascia. Yeah. Uh, 
to be clear, that Stevenson lineup is Aschenbach and Matt Bell in the nine. Andrew Davis shares with Robin Liddell in the six. A lot of drivers putting left side wheels off here. This is where you have to be careful. Right there, you could see the him. Hugh Plum, he could sense that the 84 cars were probably going to come back down on line. And that, that's the experience factor right there, not putting your nose in where it shouldn't be. I understand the aid of Anthony Mantella has gone behind the wall. Well, that's a shame because these guys are having a pretty good championship run and look pretty strong here in the early going. Well, look at the gap for our ST class leader, Chad McCumbie, who started from pole, got a couple of car lengths right from the get go, and now he has a 12 second margin over second place Jeff Mosing. He's driving like Dale Earnhardt, Bob. <laughs> Whom he once portrayed in a movie, did Chad McCumbie, and he has some great stories of sudden fame. It's one thing to be a movie star. It's another thing to be a movie star playing a racing legend. That's what Chad McCumbie has done. There's Jeff Mosing and that beautiful orange Cayman. And another Mazda MX-5. Beautiful day at Lime Rock. Lots of great vantage points around the track. Stay with us. Back on the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, the Northeast Grand Prix from Lime Rock Park in Connecticut. We just had a huge twist in the championship story, and the picture tells it. You can see it there, the number 13 run bump machine going slowly as the number six now serves a drive through penalty. Action coming off a of big band. Traffic was up ahead. Andrew Davis in close proximity to the number 13. Let's see what happened, Justin. Well, you can see, oh, look, Hugh Plum gets turned around. It was a very big impact. I mean, he got hit from behind by the, the Stevenson machine. You can see it here. The number six just touches him as he has to check up. The Porsche did check up a little for the 74 car in front, but that really isn't an excuse. They were running close. He hit. He did touch him there the lap before. I, we called it on the on air, and this is. This has huge championship implications because really, yeah. we said the Rumbun guys need to do well at the front. It really not running well for him. Now they're Whoa. off there, the 74 car down in turn one, but I think he's got a broken tie rod, Bobby. You can see the front wheels are kind of splayed open. Where... Yeah. And another spin, the 83. But to pay off that story for the run bar machine, you said it, they had to make a move. They had to make a choice. I thought that penalty, by the way, I will put my neck out and say it, was a little light. That is a championship changing mm -hmm. uh, uh, Incident. moment and yep. we have seen more stiff penalties for something that is not even going to affect uh their race that is not even going to affect Control andrew davis race arm steering something front end broke gotcha 10 four. looks like uh, probably I think their championship probably hopes just rod. broke yeah both front wheels askew and this front is a very rod. very tricky return to the pits and well, he, he's worried about if he stays on track and starts to veer off. I mean, it's a right. high-speed racetrack, this little bull ring, and uh, you don't want to suddenly end, the, end up in the middle of the pack as they come downhill. Smart move there by just giving yourself a little bit more room. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not There's, sure Skip Bob is going to like him. I come into the track and just leave turf, that one tire in the, in the, in the uh, grass. That one tire. And it'll help you. It'll help you go forward, okay? Now let's catch up on those other two incidents. Here's the Compass 360 oh. Audi, oh. and he gets to the tire wall. Yeah. Okay, that was just a little, that was a Scandinavian flick going through there, wasn't it? He went one way, <laughs> went the other. I'll take and, your word for it. And then just turned and faced the traffic. That was, I think, just a game set match for yourself. That was uh, unforced error. was Eric Zimmerman in the Porsche. Oh, tragic. Down in the pits, the at atmosphere must be crazy, guys. Get in the car. Tell Matt not to get in the car yet. Tell Matt not to get in the car, somebody. The reason that is is because of the 45-minute rule. I think they just got to wait. I don't think it's going to be affected by if he gets in or out right now because the time on the car stops when you hit the uh, pit in line. See there, just over an hour 14 on the clock. So we're right at that critical point in the race. Four driver points, but Giovardi will be on top of any, everything, even in a crisis situation like this. 
Driver change going on. With an eye on the clock, as Calvin just mentioned. 45 minute minimum drive time and an hour and 15 maximum. It works on both ends of the stick these days. And here comes the class leader, Chad McCombie. I like this move when you're leading by the gap that he had. There's always a chance to go in the line of action we're seeing right now out on the racetrack in the full caution. So they're going to bring him in. Should be their only pissed off the day. The ST cars get excellent fuel mileage, about an hour and 15 to an hour and 20. So they're right inside that window right now. Yeah, it was one of those uh, aggr passive aggressive moves, isn't it, Kelly? He's, he's making the, he's controlling the play basically. Uh, and the fact that we only had one yellow so far, right at the beginning of the race, very quickly. To Brian. See the number five from CJ Wilson in the MX-5. McCombie getting out. There will be a driver change. This is a routine stop. Something you don't see a lot in the ST category, and that is the lead that McCombie had when he came in. I got to this pit stop late because I was down at the 13. They were changing left side tires. It may have been the only two Continental tires that they changed. Not an uncommon strategy here at Lime Rock. And the key to it, Brian, is you really control things enormously, A, when you have the lead, and B, with a big lead, because typically you're going to go down a lap. It takes about 30 to 40 seconds to fill these cars, depending on how empty they are. So it's about 22 seconds time lost down pit lane, and the quickness of this lap around here is easy to go down a lap, but with the lead he had, he should stay on the lead lap with the ST machines. Jeff Mosing following the, sorry, he's following him in. It was one lap after, again, a good call, everyone in that window right now, but... Uh, Brian, I got to say, you know, we, I thought that you must be getting out of shape, mate. This is the shortest pit lane in the world. I know you've got the shortest legs in the pit lane world, but um... I'm not getting out of shape. I am out of shape. Now I'm running again. <laughs> running again. I wish we had that on camera. Instead, we're watching the driver change. Eric Foss jumping in. He's the defending ST champion from last year. He and Jeff were teamed together for most of the year, but Jeff missed a race or two, so he wasn't the joint champion with him. But Certainly a very strong combination here. Jeff did a great opening stint here, running in the second spot. Looks like a quick stop. Assuming the lead in the ST class, Justin Piscatel. 34. Well, up in Grand Sport. Good fight going on here. Austin Sendrick was aggressive early on. Now he's dropped back seven seconds or so. What an impressive young man he is. I mean, I mean, his climb in the motorsports world is just an incredible story. I mean, getting that first victory, as you said, the youngest ever winner, Bob. And uh, after his stint, I don't think he's even going to see the end of this race. After his stint, he's jumping on a helicopter, I believe, to get across. And uh, he's going to be doing a global rallycross race later today. So just uh, driving anything and everything and doing it all very, very well. Son of Tim Sendrick, president of Penske Racing. Just behind, you see the number 41, Dorn Racing Nissan 370Z. The latest of the game is there, Nick Hammond behind the wheel of that number 41 on debut here in Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge competition. Great run up into the top, top three already. Another graduate of the Nismo GT Academy, turning gamers into racing drivers. Really a phenomenal program. The four drivers who have rotated through that 41 car for Doran Racing this year, all winners in the Nissan GT Academy. Yeah, I look at that, that, that Nissan, very similar to the way you look at the dynamics uh, on track of the, of the Porsche with, with Hugh Plummer. It, it's got, it looks very sprightly, very sport, very dynamic, very low center of gravity, very low roll, roll center, Calvin. It looks as though it should win out over the Mustang over a long run. Um, but of course the Mustang is so hooked up at the moment. They, they hit the ground running very fast, but it's a great run for Nick, as you said. And I reckon coming down into the first corner into uh, Big Bend this time, he has a chance of going by him. Look, he's right in the picture now, though. The second of the Multimatic Shelby Mustangs here. Scott Maxwell started at the very back of the pack. Didn't get a qualifying lap in here yesterday due to an electrical glitch on that car. But nice steady run for Scott up to fourth spot already. Good battle. And as always, the GS cars have to be very careful as they handle the slower ST class traffic. There's the 13. Repairs continuing. Apparently not. Welcome back to Lime Rock Park, the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. 
Sam Dwyer has brought the number 26 Mazda MX-5 to the pits to hand over to co-driver Andrew Carbonell. Jamie is there. You see the team right now putting on some of that very on the front end of that car, a piece of it actually blew off. It didn't get stuck very well. But good news is, even though that damage looks very heavy, they believe right now it's just causing some aerodynamic issues. Nothing mechanical at this time. Yeah, days like today are literally damage control. You have an off, you survive it. You just got to get the car to the finish and keep it in the points. A win is improbable right now, but you never know. They've uh, certainly performed some magic. Look at the Mustangs now running in the second and third spot. Sindrick continues to hold down that second position, but he's looked like his car's getting really loose, Justin. Remember, he had to qualify essentially on the same rubber yesterday, whereas uh, Maxwell's got fresh skins on. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the Mustangs certainly look well planted, don't they? But of course, they do have a, a little bit more weight. That Nissan just flipped by there, didn't he? The 41 with Nick Hamm behind, Hammond behind the wheel. Uh, the, the Mustangs definitely, as soon as, you know, what happens with tyres, obviously our viewers know this as well as we do, but especially in a heavier car, once you start getting the tyres go off a bit, it just deteriorates very fast from there. You start to get looser, you start to wear them harder. It's like a self-perpetuating thing. Brian, you're down with the 44 car. 44 is in, Sarah Catano out, and Owen Trinkler climbing in. This team doing such a good job over the last several races, had a great run at Condania Tire Motorsport Park. Top five finish, Sarah doing a great job in qualifying. Owen Trinkler knows this racetrack well, and all the Honda Civics get an extra 200 RPM this weekend. They think that'll be a big help, not only in the power department, it allows them to stretch gears between these very close corners here at Lime Rock Park. The 13 just in front of them, they actually had to move the Rumbum Porsche out of the way as they're sharing a pit stall here. And now a slow pit stop for the 44. They actually share the same pit crew, I believe, uh, Brian. I think the Rumbum team actually uh, serviced the car for Owen as well. So uh, it's supposed to be split class uh, configuration in the races here this weekend. They combine them both to add to the action and uh, puts the pressure on that Rumbum team. There's your leader in the ST class now, Corey Lewis and a Porsche Cayman. He'll be handing over shortly. Another impressive young driver really came to the forefront last year. So many great young drivers coming up through, particularly the ST ranks. Yeah, it really is this, this, these series to be seen in to make, to make your name. Because you remember a lot of these guys, uh, a lot of people come into racing because it's, uh, it's fulfilling a fancy. Other people, it's fulfilling, a, creating a career ambition. And if you're a young guy, you've got to win. That's, I mean, in the words of like, Gilles de Ferran used to say when I asked him, what does a young driver need to be able to say to someone when he's trying to get a new job? It's just, well, I've won. Yeah. I've won 12 races or eight races. If you, you know, that's the only language that race teams and team owners and sponsors understand. So uh, that's why we see such great racing out here. Little mini goes through there through a three wheel. It's actually uh, the inside rear wheel is always off the ground on this mini, Those especially are, with heavy direction change. They are really cool little cars. That's Zach Meyer from Toronto sharing with Stephen Simpson. The mini John Cooper works team. They lost one car at Watkins Glen in a big wreck. Not been able to field a two-car effort since. But. Who'd have thought if, if John Cooper could have looked forward all these decades to see that a car that can, still carries his name, the spirit of what he created, obviously, BMW, basically, heart and soul now. Not soul, heart, engineering, uh, and technology, but still very much the old mini soul. Saw a beautiful one in Los Angeles the other day. Absolutely perfect, little, like a 1968 Mini. It looked so small, it looked like it fit <laughs> in the trunk of this one, but um, fun car. They must have fun racing it. Great battle here. This is for the second spot that uh, Stephen McAleer now takes away. So he's full of fuel and he's up to the second position in this race. So they're looking in great shape here. Mousegrad, such a great run here of success in the ST class over the last half a dozen years. But that little mini uh, is talking to one of their crew guys this weekend and they've actually got the guys from Polar uh, heart rate monitors here and they've got all of the crews wired up and uh, these guys aren't pros necessarily in this league, you know what I mean? So these are guys who come in and help on the race weekends and they said the heart rates just go through the roof when they leap over the pit wall and uh, jump into action. Quite a workout. Yeah. This is for seventh place in GS, Rob Eklund Jr. and that bright yellow Aston Martin. Yeah. Being chased by Martin Barkey in another of the Mantella Autosport Camaros. And all of these teams uh, are now past that 45 minute in terms of the minimum drive time, but now they're waiting for that fuel window to open up. 
which should be within the next minute or two. So I think we'll start to see a domino effect here with strategy in terms of some of these GS cars starting to make their pit stops. We saw the ST cars come in. They have a bigger fuel window, so that opportunity starts a lot sooner. Time remaining in the race, upper left of your screen. Just under 62 minutes. It is a warmer day here today. Uh, just to bring everyone, I mean, I, I, the guys in the pits can give us a track temperature in a second, I'm sure, but you actually have, we had a lot of rain last night. So not only is it affected offline, but it did clean up the surface. But Calvin, we saw some very fast uh, speeds run, lap times in, in uh, warm up this morning. So in fact, it might've been what the track needed. It, it cleared a lot of the rubbish off the outside lines. Uh, people went fast, go you, fast now. To your point, Calvin, about bigger window for the ST cars. If you've got two, whoa, we've got an off and on there from one of the Caymans, Jim Johnson's team, Rebel Rock Racing. When you've got two drivers who can put up similar lap times, that gives you extra flexibility in using that window for fuel. Oh, it's perfect. I mean, uh, if you've got two guys who are quick, then it's all about just hitting that number. You're out front, you've got track position, then you just call your own shots. You're not really worried about compromising anything from one driver's performance to another. 13, Rumba Porsche came out, did a lap, and is back in the pits. There he is. Brian. Crew going to work on the right side. I see tires coming out, and actually four Continental tires set up. So maybe what they'll do is put two brand new Continentals on the right, and we'll see if they move to the left. Looks like maybe right side tires only. Now the jack kind of has collapsed in the back. That's going to be a delay on the right rear, of course. Losing a couple of seconds here or there is not a problem right now. It's just making sure the car is sound. Back out on the racetrack. Right side's only, 13's back out. And they did make the driver change. Matt Plum now driving. Yeah, it's a pretty depressing hour he's got ahead of him. I mean, he just has to try and bring this car back and see if there's anything they can salvage, right, Cal? I yeah, mean, sitting in the 10th spot. So there's still points to be gained, and it's really just a question of how the number six does with that drive-through penalty. Davis has dropped down to the sixth spot, but I think a lot of these cars, including the leader we're looking at, Matt Bell, will be hitting pit lane pretty soon. Never a dull moment with the Rum Bum crew. We'll take a break and return in a minute with more. Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge from Lime Rock Park. Stay with us. Back at Lime Rock Park, the race leader, Matt Bell, brings his Stevenson Camaro Z28R to pit lane. Over the 37 mile an hour pit lane speed limit, Brian Till awaits the car. The 37 mile an hour speed limit, but it was also the 37 Mini that was right in front of him. So. That had to be a little bit frustrating. He just couldn't see his pit box all that well. The 37 dived in, and then Matt Bell to his spot. Lawson Auschenbach will be taking over. We're getting to the point now where these teams can make it to the end on a full load of fuel and four new Continental tires, but you're gonna have to conserve. You gotta go hard, but you gotta make sure you've got enough tire left to do battle at the end. Lawson Auschenbach getting strapped in. Stevenson will head back on track. Yeah, and they just want to get that first win. And uh, we talked about the Rum Bum team, you know, the guys who are going to chase down the six. These guys haven't given up, like Lawson Oshenbeck said in his interview. Yeah, whatever, whatever. They want to win. They want to win races. They want to try and put some pressure on that six car before we get to the season finale. Go, 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 go. Of course, there's only one way to earn the opportunity to, to take the fight, Calvin, and that is to be competitive, to be up front. You know, you, you definitely know that they're not going to uh, Mike is not going to call a strategy to hold one back at this stage of the series, not not with so much competition. Brian? Multimatic in both cars at the same time, and the good thing is they're pitted in the order that they were running on the racetrack. So the 15 hits his marks first. Billy Johnson will be taking over back in the 158, Jade Buford. So now it's a race on pit lane for this Multimatic cruise. Four new Continental tires, of course, and a full load of fuel. Billy Johnson wants a win after the disappointment from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park when the 15 was written off, that huge crash that we talked about at the beginning of the show, and nothing that Jade Buford would like to do better than to repeat in the 158. Maxwell out of the 15, getting strapped in is Jade Buford. Austin Sindrick taps the top of the 158, says good luck, buddy, both cars out, and the 158 is gonna beat the 15. 
Wow. Drag race off a of pit lane, so just a little bit of better execution by the 158 and uh, leapfrogging around their teammate right there. But Billy Johnson is awesome at this racetrack. He won here a couple of years ago in an outstanding performance. The last race he ever did for Roush Racing, teamed up with Jack Roush uh, Jr. to uh, take a win here at Lime Rock. And uh, he wants that win. Uh, so disappointing with the pace that they had at CTMP in the last round of the championship. Here comes the number six, Stevenson Camaro. Andrew Davis bidding for Robin Liddell. These guys seem to be ticking all of the boxes this year, Justin. I mean, that little uh, knock that we saw in the drive-through penalty, really the first mistake, let's call it, of this championship season. Yeah, as I said, though, when, when they serve that, that penalty, really not going to even put much of a, a, a dimple in the running for the, of the race for them. What they want to do is get back up into position at the front of this so they can get the maximum points because their sister car is quick here has made the most of the opportunities throughout the race so let's see how they do when they get off brian you're standing by the rear left corner of that car normal stop apart from the mechanic sitting down the mechanic sitting down on the tires absolutely looks like a routine stop the important thing for the six right now as you guys said with the problems they had the drive through just put that behind them gather as many points as they can they're in the championship lead don't mean make any mistakes they keep fighting for that win it's amazing to watch these drivers changes and all there is to do getting one driver out the other one in getting everything connected I could so easily go wrong because it is quite a complicated process he'll see Brad Jager jumping out he said I don't really like this racetrack well he liked it enough to be leading when he hit pit lane Brian <laughs> well he did and the good thing about this Nissan is we've talked about it all year long on longer runs it's very nice to these continental tires and that's exactly what Kevin Doran was saying a little bit earlier he said we don't have necessarily have the torque car does Everything pretty well, nothing spectacular, but the one thing that it does do if we have good long runs is it keeps Jack the tires the underneath them. Now a problem with the belts and the window net. Brad Jager is out. BJ Zacharias getting strapped in. Stop. Right side is done. And okay, okay, BJ okay, Zacharias okay. out on track. They'll hope they get plenty of green flag running, and we'll see if they can't get that Nissan up front. Yeah, slight delay there, because ideally you want the refueling to be the last thing that's completed, so they're waiting on tire change a little bit and driver change. See how far back they fall in the running order. New leader in ST. The uh, 36 cars hit pit lane. So Stephen McLear is back up front where co-driver Chad McCumbie put the car for the start of this race. And they could uh, do some great things here today. Coming into this race, they are 11 points out of the lead, sitting in the second spot. We saw the earlier problems for Liam Dwyer. They're still out there battling hard, but uh, could be a big points gain if they can get the the massive points for the win and the uh, 26 car struggling a little bit. It's the 56. Eric Foss running second in class. In 20 seconds is, is an awful lot of time, but I, I don't believe that McAleer can, he, as I said at the top of the show, there is no real defensive strategy to driving here. You've got to stay in attack mode within reason. Otherwise, literally, you one little mistake in traffic, one you can't back you can't run to a pace at lime rock park you've got to run to the pace that your car can run as fast as it can go so uh i think you're gonna you're gonna see that gap probably stay there if not extend because that car is hooked up this track is all about rhythm you just get into that rhythm with the flow of the track but also the flow of the traffic as well and like you say it's hard to really uh the problem with the 31 car may be smoking so we'll have to take a look at that that's the 26. Jack is up to third. It's a great little team as well. They've been doing some great things this year. Great run of poles. If you're familiar with, let's call it the old Lime Rock Park, you may be looking at these pictures thinking, I'm not quite sure what's different. Well, as we swing through Big Bend and then the left-hander, notice that hillside in the background? Over 200,000 cubic yards of dirt were moved to create better spectator sight lines through this portion of the racetrack. And when it's pointed out to you, as it was to me, all of a sudden you realize, holy smoke, that's right, I could see so much more of the track now. It's beautiful. It's always been a wonderful facility, and they continue to do great things with it. Well, problems for the 13 on what could have been a very big day for them in the championship. Brian Till has more. You can't talk about championships in Grand Sport without talking about Rum Bomb, and that's what we were talking about from the beginning of the show. Hugh, you started the car. Great run up to the front. What happened out there with the six? Yeah, you know, we got checked up in traffic coming through turns. 
turn two, and um, I had to slow up, and I guess the, the Stevenson car behind me didn't realize that we were all gonna be checked up and drove into me like, you know, I, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, it's such a shame for our guys. You see the Rum Bum guys that put the car back together and, you know, we go eight laps down, they get a drive-through penalty and, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, it really is. But thanks to our Rum Bum guys, that's all I can say. Lewis Bacardi, amazing bunch of guys. It's a shame. Big shame, we talked about how important a victory here would be. They won't get it today, Jamie. Well, down at, Bo at Body Motion, that number 31 machine, we heard Calvin say possible smoke out of it. I checked in with them. The crew members are up on the wall watching the car drive by, and they believe right now it's just some tire rub going on on that bodywork. So they're not very concerned with what's happening right now. But, Justin, you mentioned it. You mentioned the fact of the track temperature. I checked in with Continental. Track temperature right now is 104.3 degrees. That's about 10 degrees warmer than the majority of the track running time yesterday. So, yes, the track is much warmer than what these teams have been used to. Continental Tire is the official tire of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. There is a large piece of debris on the front straightaway. You saw that that fistful of cars go by. More pit action, Jamie. Yeah, the number 21 machine, Burton Racing, now on pit lane. They're doing that driver change. You see Bill Oberlin putting the window net back up for John Edwards. This will be a lengthy pit stop. As we covered earlier, they have that broken sway bar. So the team's going to get to work trying to get this car repaired and back out. See the mechanic there giving the information. It looks like it's the front sway bar that is snapped. He kind of gave that motion like someone was broke there. But you see Bill Orblin, I mean, he is so detailed about every aspect of his game. He's one of the fastest guys still out on the racetrack. But I mean, he is so focused on pit stops and uh, executing those and shaving those precious tents off, whether it's on the track or in the pit lane. Action up front in GS. Different looking. Uh, Shelby Mustang right there. 15 cars lost its rear bumper. I think they're sitting in the middle of the front straightaway. Right there. You can see it right there. That's what, that's what it should look like. That's what it's <laughs> right yeah, before and after. Uh, see the back panel missing from the car. It lays in the track and oh, there's karma. As Homer Simpson would say, darn poetic justice. They put it there, they ran it over. We'll take another break and return to the Northeast Grand Prix Round 6 of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge for 2015. Back at Lime Rock Park, coming up on 43 minutes remaining in Round 6 of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, the Northeast Grand Prix. And Calvin, you called it at the top. When Billy Johnson gets into that car, he is really good in this GT350 RC around Lime Rock. He is on the race lead. Here's how he got there. Yeah, in short order, he went from the third spot up to the second spot, dives inside of Jade Buford to take that position away from the number 158. And shortly thereafter, he is on the hunt for the lead from Lawson Arschenbach. Here we see it into the uphill. Just gets on that power a little bit earlier, Justin. Climbs the hill and gets the inside line. Yeah, taking none of Lawson's little hip check there to stow him down. He's Progress was to the front, very impressive uh, display, but this was pretty cool on the front straight. Yeah, well, Mark Pombo getting off and on it, runs over that bumper laying on the track. What a save. First driver's left to driver right, and there he is from Atlanta, Georgia, driving for Jim Johnson's Rebel Rock Racing. Johnson, we've talked about before, Florida-based record producer. He's worked with some of the biggest names in the industry. We asked him to tell us about winning a Grammy Award in our Continental Tire for What You Do feature, and the story he told, better than we could have guessed. Winning a Grammy, that was, I have friends of mine that have been doing it as long as I have, that have never got one. So it's a huge accomplishment, you know, and the song I won that Grammy for, Lollipop, with, with Lil Wayne, I actually wrote um, with Static Major. He, he passed away, right, you know, right when we did that. So it was a pretty emotional thing, too, you know. I was up for a Grammy, you know, I'm sitting there with my mother and my wife. When we won the Grammy and, and got to go on stage, I, I couldn't believe it. I don't, I think overwhelming. I felt like I was here, like here I am, like this is it, I'm, I'm the real deal. When you walk into my studio, it's right there to the left. I put it right there, you know, along with some other awards and plaques. At first I was uncomfortable to do, like, to do that. Felt like I was showing off and, and a, a songwriter friend of mine said, no man, 
that's inspiration, put it there, people are gonna like to see it. And everyone that comes in gets a picture with it and all that, so it's neat. Well, currently shown 21st in the ST class, 30th in the overall, there is Jim Johnson. He had a great story, and there's another great story in that team, Mark Bombo's co-driver, here's Jamie. That's right, Jim Johnson right now, he's talking with Ruben Pardo, but the way that this combination came together was actually through a mutual friend that um, Ruben's manager, Mike Vasquez, has. That's with Pitbull, the singer, the, the songwriters, the producer. So here this weekend, Ruben, your very first Continental Challenge race. What what did you think after your first stint? Uh, I learned a lot this weekend. The car was uh, really fast. Uh, we started in the 19th position. We were running in seventh place. I, I, make a, I did a big mistake. Uh, I have issues with the radio. And I saw a couple of cars uh, come to the pits and come into the pits, and I was waiting the yellow flag. But I don't know; it's my first time in this uh, series, and I took the decision to to come uh, too early. And it's a big mistake, and we were now one lap down. But I'm, I want to learn more about this series. And he told me yesterday, guys, he's hopeful to be able to do some more races in the future as well. Well, as you can tell from his accent, Ruben Pardo is not from this corner of northwestern Connecticut. In fact, he's from Mexico. He is a former rookie of the year in the NASCAR K&N Series East. He has won a stock car road race at this racetrack. It's quite a talent. Yeah, you hustle one of those big machines around here, yeah. you've certainly got some talent because this is extremely challenging. We're looking at, just looked at uh, Jade Buford who's starting to put the pressure on Lawson Arschenbach. There's the eight. I told you Mantella Autosports Camaro went behind the wall earlier in the race, now back out, <clears throat> but pointed in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's not the place to be pointed in the wrong direction well, either. It's very the fast, remember the cars, we got, I mean, not quite 40 left on track right now, but let's say in the high 30s, on track that means on one and a half miles there's a car literally every few hundred feet and it's gonna be very hard for him there's a local yellow being waved that means he is really pinned there for the moment uh, until he can get across safely when you can Got another couple minutes we need here anthony mantel is still behind the wheel oh. unless i missed something where the mark wilkins jumped in here for a very short stint they're going to run afoul of the uh, drive time situation here because you've got to do a minimum 45 minutes for the yeah, second guy so uh, we look at the uh, mathematics of that situation. Hats off to those corner workers as well. And in fact, corner workers at just about every racetrack. We couldn't race without them, but you saw one busily working that waving yellow in case drivers coming up the hill were unsighted from the car parked there, plus the other corner worker telling Anthony Mantella when he could safely re-enter onto a part of the racetrack where he was unsighted and couldn't see oncoming cars. And the key is you're so frustrated in the race car, just, you just want to get going, but it's such a high-speed racetrack, you've just got to pay attention and take those words of wisdom from the corner worker station. Problems in the ST category. The 34 of Simjack was on pit road just moments ago. A problem with the throttle. It's a fly-by-wire system, and the throttle assembly actually came apart. So the crew had to go to work and try to repair that and make sure that the driver actually has a working throttle in the car. At least it hasn't stuck. That's the good news. The bad news is it may still not be fixed. Also a problem for the 56 Foss behind the wheel right now from Marilla Racing. I was just talking to the team. The fuel filler door is open. They don't think that's going to be a problem. The official said we won't bring him in for that as long as nothing leaks. Now the nine has a problem on track. Yeah, he went off. In the right hander there. He's had an off, so be curious to see if the 158 was involved. They were in very close proximity. They came across the stripe. The nine car was in front. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's uh, it the uh, Pombo car ahead of him. Yeah, he kind of lost a little bit. I'm not sure if they were they were rubbing as they came in there, and as Mark kind of get tried to get back online, that's what caused the contact. Let's take a closer look here. Oh, he's already he's going well for off, a ride. Yeah. I think I've, Lawson may have been to the, the left flank of Mark, and Mark tried to go back on to set up for the right-hander and uh, put the nine car in the grass. Well, we talked about it at the top of the show. Traffic on this one-and-a-half-mile, seven-turn racetrack is a huge challenge. All part of the fun at Lime Rock. We'll take a break and return. 36 and a half minutes to go.
Welcome back to Lime Rock Park in round six of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, the Northeast Grand Prix on a beautiful day in northwestern Connecticut with Calvin Fish and Justin Bell. I'm Bob Varsha up in the announce booth down in the pit lane, Brian Till and Jamie Howe, and there is Spencer Pompelli. He and teammate Luis Rodriguez Jr., a rookie in the series this year, have won a couple of races. Pompelli is on a charge right now. He really is. They've been very quick this year. You mentioned two wins, including the last round at CTMP. And uh, right now, Spencer is on a charge. He's up to the third position, about 13 and a half seconds behind our leader, which continues to be Stephen McAleer. But one lap there, as sure as traffic related, he took four seconds out of that lead. So still a ways to go here, 31 plus on the board. Anything can happen. They are in third place right now with one of the drivers of the second place, Porsche Cayman. Here's Brian. Jeff Mosing sharing that car with Eric Voss. And Jeff, it's been a while since this team has really run on all cylinders the way it has in the past when championships were won. What have been some of the issues that have put you guys back and you seem to have gotten rid of all of them here this weekend? Uh, yeah, starting with Sebring, uh, we had a mechanical failure with suspension there. Uh, we had another mechanical failure with a part of the suspension um, at the last race in Canada where we were moving up in the race and things look good. And then we had another little bit of a heartbreaker. So. For this weekend, I'm really proud of the guys with Ken Marilla and all the guys to get the car back on pace with everybody else. Uh, you know, because halfway through the season, we just we were struggling a little bit. And now it looks like we're back into the into the mix of things. Uh, really proud of Eric. He's got he's got a lot of work to do uh, with the number five car out front of us, and uh, Pump, Pumpelli's uh, knocking on the back door here. So uh, we'll see what happens here in the next 30 minutes. See what happens. Jeff told me he wants to get back home and have his driver's suit smell like champagne again, Jamie. Well, Brian, you mentioned it at the top of the show that this number 15 Mustang, brand new car after that damage at CTMP. Scott, what can you say about your crew and this new car? Uh, you can't say enough. I mean, it's unbelievable. That last car was written off, unfortunately. Um, they had nine days to rebuild a car from scratch. Not even rebuild, it's a brand new car. And uh, it had never turned a wheel until yesterday. So, and then we missed qualifying. So, this is for the crew. They've done a great job. Still a long way to go, but right now things are going well, and we're finally having a bit of luck because we've had a pretty lousy season so far, Billy and I, but today's going well, and uh, if, if we can hold together, for sure, this is for Multimatic and, and for performance. See what Billy can do in these final 30 minutes. Thank Thanks. you. I was talking with Larry Holt, owner of Multimatic. He said if the wreck they suffered hadn't taken place near their home ground in Canada, at CTMP, if they were somewhere, say, like on the West Coast, they never would have been able to get another car put together for this race. Here's the wreck once again. Uh, just match contact there in turn four, one of the fastest parts of the racetrack. Another look at it here, Justin. Yeah, when we watched this live, he went in so hard, and look at it, he spun the car around. It, it was a tremendous impact, the fastest segment of that track. Not the place to have it happen, and uh, actually, that was pretty... Uh, one of the uh, action areas of the track for the whole weekend. What a yeah, great was... race that was. We enjoyed every minute calling it. And it's great to see them out here because, you know, we, we look at the drivers, that, you know, we, we like to think ourselves as the heroes, we, but we're pretty useless about, outside of, I'm really talking about you and I, Calvin, <laughs> but the guys out there right now, you know what I mean? The drivers get all the fun, the glory, and, and the chance to drink the champagne, but the mechanics are the ones that do the work. Oh, and, absolutely. and I, certainly speaking for myself, I'm not one of the drivers that could even have turned a wrench on a car. I'd have been still in Formula 4 back at Brands Hatch, stuck in 1988, but some drivers aren't. Uh, on board, the 26, heading down. I love hearing the the engine note of this car, just as he went over, we'll try and pick it up maybe on another lap. And you hear the revs as they go over the brow, they're woo, as they go up. Uh, full, high revving Mazda engine holding his position out there on track. Running 14th in the SD class is Andrew Carbonell. Whoa, 75 getting a little loose up ahead in Big Bend. Significantly, Bob, they're running 14th in class, and the guys who are behind them in the championship are leading this race, so there could be a huge point swing here today. They will try and look at the uh, permutations here, but if they finish where they run right now, this is what the ST points would look like from an 11 point lead for Dwyer and Carbonell to a seven point deficit. That's a huge swing. Absolutely. And it's not like McAleer and McCombie have lucked into it. They have been really, really quick. They are an interesting pair, are the two Max. One from North Carolina, and he sounds every bit of it. The other from Scotland. 
although he has now decamped to North Carolina for his sports car racing career here in North America. We'll be back with more from Lime Rock. Stay with us. Welcome back to Lime Rock Park, built in 1956, held the first professional road race in America in 1957. Today it's the site of round six of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. You see Mark Pombo sliding that Rebel Rock. Porsche came in through the left-hander. A lap ago, he took a somewhat different line out of Big Ben and into No Name Straight, Justin. Yeah, a little all-wheel drift off. I don't think this is the official Skip Barber line somehow. Uh, but he held on to it. But look at that dip. I mean, oh my God, I tell you what, you wouldn't be able to do that in a in a PC car or a prototype car. He is all four, four wheels off. I tell you what, he was keeping his foot in it, rejoined the track, heads up as he got out, and he got straight back to racing action, as you can see there. He's enjoying a little bit of dirt on the outside of all those corners, as most of the competition have. We joined the 92 car, who is, looks like steam coming out of the front there, Bob. Yeah, steam or smoke coming out of the front end of that hard Honda. This team is another great story. Honda American Racing Team, founded by Honda employees who just wanted to take the cars they built and race them on the weekend. Looks like he is safely out of the way. We don't expect a full course caution. Meanwhile, here's Jamie in the pit lane. And Chad McCombie is watching on as these ST troubles continue. But Chad, for you guys right now, it's pretty smooth sailing at the front of the pack. What condition is this number five in in the closing stages? I think it's pretty decent. Um, you know, like I've said, uh, all, all weekend and all day, you know, that our CJ Wilson guys gave us an awesome Mod Space Mazda today. And I hope we can keep that thing up front. Uh, Steven's doing an awesome job. Car's been phenomenal the whole race long, so uh, we just need to avoid any trouble and uh, keep it clean and bring it home. All right, and guys, one little note that I want to make before I toss it is that the right side tires on this car are the same tires that they qualified on, started the race on, and have done the entire race on. Brian? Matt Bell qualified the number nine on pole, and I look back over the season, I see those two podium finishes at the beginning of the year, but not back there since then. You guys have to feel like you've got some bad luck. What does Lawson have to do right now to just focus forward and put that behind him? You know, it's going to be hard for Lawson. I, I think um, during my stint when the, when the car was starting to fall off, it was really difficult. The, the kind of car I don't like to deal with on one half of the track, and I know it's the kind of car he hates on the other side of the track. So we're kind of complaining about two different things, but we're really complaining about the same thing, which is we kind of missed the, uh, the mark on the setup. So he's going to have a hard time. You know, we just we keep finding our, our way into this bad luck. So. Um, Whatever we need to do to start changing that is something we're all we're all going to have to start passing around the team. What did he say about the contact out on the racetrack? Uh, it's, oh, the contact with the ST car that the nine car made. Yeah, they. Um, uh, he didn't say much. Um, what he did say, I don't think I can repeat. So it was just um, just I think an ST car just kind of missed his mark a little bit and bounced off our car and kind of pushed him off the track. So it, it's super unfortunate. It's that kind of thing that we have to avoid. Um, so it's just one of those racing incidents again. This is what happens when we pack this many cars on a one mile track. More bad luck. Remember, three pole positions on the year. These guys have been incredibly fast. But they've yet to win. Is, is Chad McCombie British? <laughs> um, Southern British. You know how we could play in a movie? Yeah. They're thinking about this. Uh, so we're watching as this race unfolds course, for the last 20 minutes. Full course, course yellow. Course. Where was that from? That car parked up there. That's wow. Interesting. The 92 car, I believe, was stranded in an unsafe place. Couldn't get to a safe zone. So well, within the last 30 minutes of the race, so this will be a short yellow. Kevin Bowen, you saw him standing behind the Armco there. Remember, when we watch this, the race director has a lot more information at his fingertips than we do. He has a lot more camera angles. Uh, so when they call a full course yellow, especially with 20 minutes to go, they have a reason for it. And it probably is this car's about to go on fire. Well, in fact, I think this might be the reason for the full course caution. They thought it was a fire. They had to get the crews out there safely to deal with it. So let's wave the flag and get the field neutralized. There are no bad seats at Lime Rock. We'll be back. We've done a couple of couple of major things. We've fixed the paddocks. That's where you park your race car and work on it. We've paved them. We've enlarged them. We've solved our drainage problems. They used to flood. So that's the great thing for the competitors. For the fans, 
we've improved the sight lines. We've moved 200,000 cubic yards of earth, built new spectator areas, not grandstands, hills, planted an awful lot of trees, and cut down the scruffy ones that were in your way. It really looks good. That it does, Lime Rock Park, reborn. It's a great viewing area right here through that downhill now. Yep, you see it there. Just outside the track on the bridge level, you see the people gathered up there. Safety car comes off and we are ready to go green once again with 16 minutes remaining here at Lime Rock. Two multi-matic cars lead the field back to green. You can see the Nissans there trying to get through a little bit of traffic there as they get caught up. Maybe a little touch there as Liddell was trying to get around the 41 machine. The eight is off, drivers left. Well, yeah, it, you know, that is a very demanding corner through that double right hand of the two Nissans running nose to tail there. Stevenson definitely got knocked out there. Lawson not really having a, a, a fun last third of this race, but uh, right behind him actually was, uh, even though he's lying a long way back, was the Porsche, the uh, plump Porsche. I think Mark Wilkins was probably taking the eight off track to get out of the way because they are many laps down at this point. That's true. Good point. Billy Johnson did what he had to do at the start there, Calvin, didn't he? Which is just take be, off. be decisive, <laughs> take off. Yeah. Don't get involved in anything else, even though it's your teammate behind. Uh, with only 14 minutes left, or just under 15 minutes left, you need to keep your track position. So it's a pair of Mustangs followed by a pair of Nissans. Billy Johnson and Jay Buford in the Shelbys, BJ Zacharias and Stephen Doherty. Look at Liddell the there in braking for Big Ben, really eats into the. Uh, cushion that those Nissans have so how far will he push it will he look about the big picture the fact that the rum bump car is uh, further back in the action right now or will he try and get that podium spot they'd love to have and add to that points tally they have for the year right now well a podium is 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 certainly worth pushing for here uh, Brian down in the pit lane Kevin Doran got two cars running third and fourth, and Kevin, the only guy or one of the guys, certainly that didn't want to see that full course caution was you. No long green flag run at the end. How are those cars are going to be the Nissans trying to hold off Camaros. Well, these first few laps will be in trouble, but uh, on the long run we're good. So um, it was going our way until the yellow came out, but uh, maybe we can hold our own. The guys had told me before we came into this weekend we'd never run particularly strong at Lime Rock. What is it about this racetrack that's not suited to the Nissan? Well, the um, Back in the old days, I won a lot of races here, and I love this place, but here in modern day times with the Nissan, uh, I think it's a torque track. So uh, the V8 cars have probably a, a race advantage over the V6. A little bit of a torque advantage, but right now the guys holding on as tight as they can. They'd love to have one, two Nissans up on the podium, maybe even get a race win, guys. Yeah, they're looking pretty tidy, Brian, too. You talk about the time management, lighter weight car, and good on the long runs, but still come into play here just over 13 minutes to go it doesn't take much if 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 jay buford over there you could hear the engine where are the ribs pick up you still have to be a little gentle on the throttle as you go over there in the old days you had to back right out as you'd land and and just pop a drive shaft but uh, as they head down just listen coming onto the front straight there I remember kevin Warren winning races here at lime rock with al holbert's low and brow special porsches back in the mid 80s yeah what a, a heyday that was yeah. a lot of races but i was just going to say it won't take much if jay Booth, buford especially because i think his car is not as strong as billy johnson at the front only has to drop off by half a second and uh you could see that nissan take that spot see the leader in st there stephen mackler has opened up a nice four second advantage over his closest pursuers but pompelli is all over the back of Eric Foss right now for the second spot. And I think he has a bit more speed than Eric, so if he can clear him. But uh, Steven's done a great job in trying to establish an early cushion here after the restart. Staying neatly out of the way of the big GS ground pounders. There you and, see the battle yep. there. Spencer Mopelli just dropping a wheel off there. You see the dust <laughs> from the Cayman. Yeah, I mean, you really are squeezing every bit out of these cars. You know, not a lot of torque. It's all about rolling speed through the middle of the corner, getting off the brakes as early as you can. Remember earlier in the race, we saw the Liam Dwyer Mazda get apparently touched from behind and went in the wall pretty hard. Well, we've been wondering for the whole race what happened. Uh, Jamie, what was the story? We're about to get a car down pit lane here, but Liam is standing by. Liam, we saw the damage on the car. What actually happened? Our cameras didn't catch it all. I'm not really sure. 
going down No Name Street. We got a Jimmy each other alone when someone got into the back of me. Spun me and I went off sideways into the inside wall there, driver's right. Wrinkled the front end pretty good. Fortunately, the temperatures are okay. The water pressure, water temperature, and uh, oil temperature are good. But the, the alignment's not a little bit off of the car, so we don't have the pace that we need to stick with the leaders, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's also a big hit in the championship points. So there will be no second win at Lime Rock for Liam Dwyer. Look on Pally there through the uphill. Definitely carried a little bit more apex speed than Eric Foss was able to. Spencer's really doing what you do there, Calvin. You really do try and set up for a clean run through the last corner, through, through the downhill, get that nice little bit of run there to try and get him down under braking for Big Bend. Uh, easier said than done because it's also quite easy to defend going down into there. These cars aren't as aero dependent as other race categories that we call Justin, but certainly that front splinter does work, so it can still hurt you in a corner like that when you're really tucked up close behind. Funny thing is, you actually have a second chance here because it does. Uh, you know what actually happened there was uh, Eric stayed to his line, stayed to the inside, made Spencer have to look at the long way round, which was never really going to happen. Uh, I think this is the running order right now until you see Eric make a mistake. That battle looks like it'll go all the way to the end. We've got one more break, and we'll be back to take you to the checkered flag here at Lime Rock Park. So stand by for the Northeast Grand Prix to come. Back at Lime Rock, great racing in both the GS and ST classes. GS on the left, ST on the right. Spencer Papelli in the white Porsche Cayman trying to get around Eric Foss in the orange car, and he almost had it done. Yeah, it's a great section of the racetrack. You can literally go side by side there for three corners and uh, two guys just doing an awesome job of racing it clean. Both of these battles left and right are for second place in class. On the left, Jade Buford trying to hold off the Nissan BJ Zacharias. And on the right, it's Foss and Pompelli. Well, BJ Zacharias is certainly putting the pressure on Jade Buford and uh, the good news for Billy Johnson is, is Jade Buford is almost acting like a wingman for him because uh, I think BJ has certainly shown a lot of speed with that Nissan in the late going. Yeah, I think basically Jay pushed very hard early on in his stint, drove excellently, but the tires are probably going off for him at a rate that is not compatible with uh, his position as <laughs> second place in this field. And I think if BJ exercises a little bit of discipline and, and foresight and plans ahead, he's going to be able to get a run, maybe down into Big Bend and take second spot. If they make the podium, I'm sure BJ's teammate, Brad Yeager, will be happy. Yeager got sick earlier this week, told me yesterday he wasn't feeling up to it, especially on a hot day. And we have a warm one today, but right now they're in a podium spot. And he had a lovely run out there. You, heard, you actually heard him get on the gas just ahead. Jade is actually blocking very nicely there. But let's see if you can do the old up and under going into turn into Big Bend there. The real key of what the race does will allow you to do. You can be um, proactive. You cannot be reactive. So if you yeah. want to change your line down into the first corner, go ahead and choose it. But then stay there. You can't be, you know, jostling around depending on what the car behind is trying to do. I'll tell you what, Pompelli typically is the master in terms of reading these race situations and. Uh, making these uh, dramatic moves, but right now he's got a key player in front of him in Eric Foss. I was just about to say that, talking with Spencer about racing lines and track analysis and situations, strategic on the track, is fascinating. What a race we saw in the AST battle at the last round with Carbonell and Pompelli that went on forever, and uh, Pompelli just came out on top, grabbing their second win of the year. Let's look at our Continental race recap. Billy Johnson leads in Grand Sports, Stephen McAleer and Street Tuner, both fairly comfortably. Just two caution flags. Last year, these classes ran separate races at Lime Rock. It was one caution of the GS race, three in ST, so basically with two in the combined race, we're right on schedule. There has been a lot of the anticipated traffic, contact, and dust-ups. Run and uh, the GS class, Billy Johnson's lead has been cut down to just over two seconds. So he may have encountered a little bit of traffic on that lap for that lead margin to be reduced as we now go on board with him. Clear track ahead now. Here comes the diving turn. What a great corner. This one will get you attention. 
Yeah, you stand out there. The cars look really quick through there when yeah. you go and have a look in person. And the crowds here do love it because they get up close and personal with watching these great cars from all these different manufacturers and all these drivers. Who wouldn't want to be driving around Lime Rock Park today? So much smoother than the old days. I, I raced here back in the late 80s, and you'd come down this straightaways. You'd barely see straight. Your eyeballs would try, try to come out of their sockets, but resurfaced a handful of years ago to great effect. But I bet you saw clear enough when you won, didn't you, Calvin? <laughs> yeah. We have you to won, mention, yeah. we are sitting with a Lime Rock race winner. That's right. Yeah. It's a great racetrack, just lots of fun. Proving that being able to see is overrated. Yeah. <laughs> There is about a 55 foot elevation change in this track. Again, part of the fun. Over 50 feet of it come in that diving turn and another big chunk in the uphill section leading to West Bend. Guys, I just checked in with Spencer from Pelle's team to see if he has any chatter over the radio, how his tires are holding up anything. And they said he is so quiet on the radio right now. He said head down, eyes forward. He's determined to get at least a second, hopefully a win. Yeah, no, I, mean, I mean, look at him. He's working everything he has. But you said Eric Foss is not being easy. I mean, Spencer's actually worked his rear tires so hard. He's got a lot more rotation in the car going by. And he's pushing himself right up against uh, the, the bumper of the 56 every time they go through. I actually think he's quicker on the infield, on the second infield, on, on the, the left turn, the right turn, and going down no name straight. This is where he needs to be quicker, though, because this is where he has to dive down to the inside like he is. Can he make it stick? No, a little bit far back, but can he make it stick on the part two of Big Bend? Yeah, this is where he seems to have really good grip, just to be able to carry a little bit more apex speed, rolling speed through the corners. But uh, Eric's pretty canny and savvy. He's really not opening the door, but right now Spencer will know, and he's got nothing to lose. I mean, the championship is a long way out for these guys, even though they've had two wins, had some problem races as well. So he's going to be going for it for sure. Left-hand side of your screen, you've got BJ Zacharias. Actually had a lovely shot coming off Big Bend. I mean, coming off the last corner. But actually, I have to say, Jay Buford is really uh, looking as though he's struggling with those tyres. Look, BJ Zacharias. Oh, I tell you what, I'm struggling. I'm just going to be quiet for a minute. Go on, someone else carry this ball. <laughs> OK, deep breath. <gasps> Down the hill they come. These two battles for second place in each of the two classes taking place on opposite sides of the racetrack. Two and a half minutes, mate. I'll be done, I'm working. I can't get by him, Donald, please. That's Spencer Papelli saying, I'm working on it, but I just can't get by him. This is great racing, don't you love it? I mean, our production crew do such a great job here of bringing us the action. There is twice as much action out there on the track, so we have it split screen for your viewing pleasure. Uh, whatever class you're rooting for here, it's certainly enough to, to watch. All right, no sucking up now. Let's go. Look the at Nissan this. trying the outside. Zacharias on Buford for yeah, second. He's, he's got, got a pick there, too. Yeah. So uh, Jade was in the perfect spot there to defend the inside line and realized the outside line wasn't open either. As Pompelli continues, he's just going to be studying. Is there a weak link in Eric Foss's game here today? Can I take advantage and get that next step on the podium? With one minute. 35 left to go. You better start making up your mind. Remember, this is a short lap here, so two laps. A little bit of traffic as the leader comes up on the back of some of the ST cars. Of course, with all that talk of the Mustang, you can go by pretty easy, but... Oh, look at that. <laughs> Buford and Zacharias looking for traction coming up over the uphill. Oh, and Spencer Papelli is trying hard now. He knew he's, he's running out of corners, running out of seconds. Yeah, these guys are buddies too, so he doesn't want to rough up Eric Foss too much, but certainly their race is in the same point. God, Zacharias has a great run. He is being forced to take the long way around. He's got to make his stick now. He's going to dive to the inside to try Jump and get some in. track position. Can he do it? Can he get on the inside there? No, Jade actually holds his line very nicely. This traffic they're coming up on is going to play a part. The well, look Nissan who's right is... behind them, though, Rob oh, Liddell. Yeah. He is up to the fourth spot, and he's closing in as these two battle. He is right there looking for a podium run here today, our championship leader. White flag next time by for race leader Billy Johnson. Keep in mind, Johnson and Scott Maxwell. Pompelli to the inside. Oh. He looks to the inside, deep on the brakes. Oh, they're Woo. taking to the curb to make the most of it. That is great stuff. Last lap, he has to pull something like that off. Otherwise, he is not going to go by. 
Tried to take him by surprise, and sometimes when you react to that from Eric Foster's standpoint, you go in a little bit too deep, but he didn't do that. He controlled his braking perfectly in response to that challenge. Bring it home, one lap, last lap, no threats from behind, no threats, so take it easy in the traffic. Three second lead for Billy Johnson. Yeah, as I was saying, he and Scott Maxwell had problems, did not qualify, started 12th, last in the GS field. But they have moved through the class to put themselves in position to take the victory. Yeah, this ST traffic is playing a little bit of a, of a blockage for, for these GS guys as they go through. It wouldn't, be t wouldn't take much at all for Robin Liddell to have made a move there. Uh, we white can't obviously down. see out the white back white. of the, the Nissan, but all is not over for these guys. Spencer's got one lap left to try and pull this off. Oh, he touches the outside but loses the rear end. The grip wasn't there to do that. He's asking a lot out of that Porsche right now. Just trying to tighten his hands, look to the inside and get on the power at the same time the tires gave up. Meanwhile, flashing the headlights. A come from behind victory go, Billy. for Billy Johnson and Scott Maxwell. Second victory for the GT350 RC. 1-2 uh, finish for Multimatic as Jay Buford hangs on. McAleer continues to lead in the Mazda and ST, but it's all for this second spot. Traffic up ahead. Everybody trying hard here on the last lap. Oh, look oh. at that. Oh. Traffic tried to get out of the way, and he could split them right here. Pompelli's got to go the long way around. That hurts. Oh, absolutely. So Eric Foss will take second place in ST. Good Spencer Pompelli third, but up front, Stephen McAleer and Chad McCombie have been sublime, taking pole, dominating the race, and picking up the win. We'll be back. Welcome back to Lime Rock, where we had two classes, one come from behind victory, one dominating performance. You see Billy Johnson being congratulated by his teammate, Next stop on the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge will be Road America. Talk about a contrast in racetracks from tiny Lime Rock to massive Road America. So be sure to join us for that. Let's hear from our winner now, Brian Till. Celebrations all around down here on the front straight at Lime Rock and Billy Johnson. Man, these cars are fantastic. Two wins in three races. What was going through your mind in the closing stages with all of the traffic here with combined classes? You never know in traffic. They can play for you or against you. And man, we've had some bad luck with uh, losing the 15 at Mo Sport and uh, completely written off. And these guys worked an entire week to get us a brand, me and Scott, a brand new car. And it just goes to their hard work and dedication to give us a great car at Multimatic and Ford Performance and Continental Tire for being an awesome tire. And I can't thank Scott enough. He drove through the entire field after a small little electrical gremlin prevented us from qualifying. And I, I just can't thank everybody's hard work enough for this. Congratulations, their first victory on the year, guys. All right, let's take a look at the championship points, beginning with Brent Sport. Well, they had a 17-point lead coming in, and they extend out to 24 despite finishing off the podium. So a great day for Davis and Liddell. And in Street Tuner. Well, McCombie and McClear, it was a very strong performance for them. Liam Dwyer, they were ahead. They're now behind. That was an unfortunate race. Back down to Brian. Stephen McAleer here talking with uh, the online sources. And Stephen, what a great job. The win, so important for you guys, the second one of the season, but more important in the championship, where you kept abreast of where Andrew Carbonell and Liam Dwyer were running all day long, because this is going to be big in the points. Yeah, you know, we knew uh, when we lapped Liam out there. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know where they finished, but, uh, you know, the CJ Wilson guys gave us a great car today. Second stint wasn't too easy for me. We had to be careful in traffic. But, you know, we're psyched for Modspace and, and Mazda and these Continental tires. We only took left sides and I think still ran the same lap times. We had a, we had a great day today. A dominating day in ST. Jamie? Well, it was a hard fight for second and third, though, and Eric Foss. The first thing you said when you took your helmet off was it's a good thing we're friends. Talking about Spencer from Pelly, what was that battle like? Yeah, well, uh, Morello Racing guys have really worked hard the last couple weeks. We've struggled the last few races, uh, just a couple problems. And, you know, I didn't want to complain about it, but it's just been tough. And so... They really gave us a good car today. Um, the conditions were good for the Caymans. You know, the MX-5, we didn't have a fight for. And, you know, Spencer, he's just one of the best in the business. And I, they kept giving me the margin. I was trying to save tires, so I had enough for him. 
and on that last yellow, it was everything I could do. And I mean, he raced me super clean. I was a little defensive a couple of times, and uh, every time I was waiting for a little contact, and he just never did anything. So you know, I can't thank Jeff Mosin enough. These Continental tires were just amazing for the stint that we ran in the car, and uh, just the whole thing was just a blast. And I mean, Spence is, thanks, man. <laughs> I and mean, he's giving a handshake right here to Spencer. Spencer, he was just saying how clean that battle was. Heard you on the radio saying you're trying, you're trying. What else did you need? I needed him to make a mistake, but I, I knew that wasn't going to happen. And he drove really well. And, uh, you know, we had a good car, but so did Eric. And, and he was really good in the downhill, which is probably the only place that is really easy to pass. I tried every other way, but he did a great job. But big thanks to uh, Lewis, all the guys at uh, Ren Sport One. You know, it was a really, really great effort from these guys. It turned the season around for real. We've got a, a third podium now in, in uh, two races. So anyway, it was really uh, a fun battle. I love racing here. And uh, thanks to Lewis and all the guys. It was fun to watch. Congratulations on the podiums, guys. Great race, big fun, and lots more to come from one and a half mile Lime Rock. We go to four mile Road America, the American Nurburgring, then Virginia International Raceway, another beautiful track, Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Finally, the Petit Le Mans weekend at Road Atlanta. Road America coming your way Monday, August 17th, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox Sports 1. Don't miss it. Final thought, Calvin? Well, we said it was going to be a pivotal day for Rumbum and their championship hopes that went the wrong direction with that hit, so unfortunate, but they continue to roll. Davis and Nadell still on top. How about you, JB? This track just provides such great racing action. Uh, it's so close, so fast quarters that, uh, you know what, They're, everyone's positioned for the end of the season. On to Road America. Don't miss it. For Calvin Fish, Justin Bell, Brian Till, and Jamie Howe, thanks for joining us here at beautiful Lime Rock Park. We'll see you from Wisconsin in a few weeks. Till then, so long, everyone.